Oh, just water? Yeah, I mean, you yeah. gotta lube it up. <laughs> so they say, just makes it easier. Yeah. Makes the holidays that much better. <laughs> Does it? Is that how that works? I don't know. Um, oh. I never know when you I know. hit go. Because I like to kind of catch the... Uh, yeah, no, I'm just worried about part of the things you just said. I know, I'm not. I'm not worried at all. That, that was on there? Oh, it's on there. Well, now it's New Year's. <laughs> okay. Wow. They only know if they get the password. This is your last free one, gang. Ooh. Before the passwords start. Don't tell anybody. I want to turn my basement into a speakeasy. You should. I know. That'd be a good speakeasy for it. It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Dude, my brother. We just, we just, he's, he's blowing you up over there. We're just not the I same mean, person. You want to watch a soccer game for crying out loud? If you're home and bored, Rami's Boiler Room London DJ set to go live on YouTube at 11. I don't know what that means. I don't either. I don't, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know those words. Rami's DJ yep. set to go live on what? YouTube. Now I know YouTube. YouTube. I know 11. That's a time. <laughs> I wore more soccer team. I wore number 11 for a long time. I don't know. So, I don't know. Eddie, you thirsty? I'm here with the first. You guys. Oh, wow. Let me just. You'll hear the tone. It will be exactly. <laughs> time to get a drink. Happy New Year, Eddie. He's got a busy night ahead, doesn't he? Man? He's, he's, uh, he's got a full night. night. Yeah, he, yeah, he was sleeping on top of the bar when I came in earlier. Oh, was he really? Yeah, he, yeah. Well, he said he's got to find them when he can. The sleep or the bars? Yes, yes. Yeah, that sounds like that the answer. His pants were unzipped. His napkin's sticking out of him. Was, I don't, was I don't Helen know. still here? She was in the back. She was, um, I don't know. She said she had spilled some icing on the front of her. I'm not sure what that was. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> Well, I, she, I mean, she is a baker. They make uh, cinnamon rolls for the New Year's. It's a mm -hmm. one-time thing. It's a big deal. It's a lot Woo! Speaking of night. Uh -huh. What is that? It's, a, it's called a night tripper. It's a oh, sláinte. Yeah, sláinte. Okay. There he is. There he is. Just getting all over it. Speaking of night. Bobby night? Um, no, no, no. I mean, this is, this is one of the nights where almost everyone stays up late. Um, you know, New Year's Eve, everybody wants to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, um, um, it's good. It's, it's not bad. It's, it's that's a lot thick. better than Jameson Arms. We did, uh, that's, uh, last um, episode. Yeah, no, this is, this is called a night tripper. This is bourbon. Um, uh, That Amaro. would make me trip at night. Strega. Hold on, start over. Bourbon. Amaro. Strega. Strega. And Peshaw bitters. Wow. Uh, There's so many bitters. There's. All kinds of bitters. And you have to keep them refrigerated. <laughs> you don't keep, I don't keep bitters refrigerated. You don't have to keep bitters refrigerated? No, not at all. You mentioned so many bitters. I'm like, man, you just have like a bitter cabinet. I do have a bitter cabinet. It's not bitter. a refrigerator. <laughs> I keep them in the fridge. So it's no, like man. mustard, ketchup, Augusta bitter, orange bitter, <laughs> cherry bitter. The, um... <laughs> only did it once. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, the, um, what? Let's go back and listen to that. No, the, uh, the only thing I keep refrigerated after I open it when it comes to like the bar is sweet and sour, sweet vermouth. Uh -huh. So, well, I never have sweet and sour. I just make fresh lime juice for sour mix. What? <laughs> sweet and sour is not lime. That there's lime. But you can, if you want a sweet and sour mix. You can just make it at home with simple syrup and lime juice. You make so you buy simple syrup. No, I have a thing of simple syrup, and I keep simple syrup in my fridge too. There you go. Uh huh. Yeah. And that's just water and sugar. You don't make that. Well, that's too hard for you. No, that's what I said. I can make that. The process we're all tough to boil the water. No, I, I have my own simple it. syrup bottle. It's like in just like a little. I don't know, like a little squirt bottle. Man, next time I'm at your house, you're gonna have to give me the tour. I'm gonna have to see how you set up because I'm gonna have to fix. I'm gonna have to fix my setup. Dude, speaking of, this was funny. I had a, <laughs> I had a buddy over recently, and um, he he went to the bar in our living room and like opened the cabinet, and was just like, "You have it all." Uh huh. And I was like, "Yeah, like I, like if we host, there's there's very very few things I can't make someone if they're at my house." And that's what being a host is, right? Like, you want yeah. people to be comfortable. You want them to enjoy their stay. Uh, like, for temporary, not, like, long-term. <laughs> Do you? But, yeah. Yeah, I, most, mm, I don't know. I hang out with the wrong crowd. They don't know what drinks are. 
Mm. Which is, I mean, and you're like, what do you recommend? I'm like, what do you like? I'm like, well, what do you like? Oh. I, here's the here's the key to that because that's frustrating, right? Well, I, it's like I'm not I'm not guessing your palate. Well, what I well I I guess what I've assumed with that because it's happened enough where I'm just like oh people just don't know what they they don't know what they like or they like right if it's not a recommendation on the on the cocktail list yeah they don't have what that is and so then I was like well then I should just have two or three cocktails mm -hmm. that they can that are out there and like here's here's some options. Based yeah. on what you want, like if you like something sweet, here's a good option. If you like something, yeah, that's a little more bold, like here's an option. I I actually learned this trick from a bartender, where a guy I worked with, um, we were we were out on a case and we had gone to dinner and um, you know me, I I like when I go someplace to a restaurant, I prefer to sit up at the bar, mm -hmm. mostly because kids aren't allowed in the bar. And so, like, I don't have to listen to a family dynamic Those nearby. And so, yeah, and it's it's a selfish thing, but it's who I am. I, I own it. Yeah. Um, so we sat up at the bar, and I I know my way around what I like, you know. And, and I tend to have five to six drinks that I just can go into a bar and know that I can order it. It's not complicated. Yeah. It, it's going to hit for me. Joel didn't know that, the guy I was working with. And so he was like, I... I I don't know. I don't know what to get. And the bartender just said, what was the last drink you really enjoyed? He's like, the last drink you made at home that you enjoyed. He's like, no matter what it was, what was it? He's like, it was Apple Crown and, and Sprite. He's like, okay, so you like kind of a sweeter thing? And he's like, we, we can make you a drink like that. And I was like, oh, that's a great question. So then if somebody comes over and they're like, well, I don't know. What, what do you want to make me? I'd be like, well, what was the last drink you liked? And then that kind of at least gets you into the ballpark. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. I'll try it. We got a party coming up. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give the old college try. Give the old college try. I'll give the old now, college try. My buddy who was at my house was really funny because he was like, um, I was like, well, what, what do you want? He's like, I haven't had a Boulevardier in a while. Oh, I, like, oh, I, haven't, I haven't either. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, here we go. You're like, well, well let's, played. Let's, let's have Boulevardiers. Yeah. I was like, boy, I really hate Campari. But boy, that's a good drink. <laughs> that's a good drink. It's worth it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's uh, your New Year's, guys. Just grow up and be a professional drunk like Uncle Patrick <laughs> and Uncle Ben. Um, no, you you do have a good bar. Um, I, I, I need to build out beyond the hard liquors. Mm -hmm. To help complement mm -hmm. what that looks like, um, but yeah, it's because there's no shelf life on most of that stuff. Yeah, so we can kind of just sit there and wait, wait yep. for you. Absolutely, yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not hitting it hard enough. You probably hit it a little harder than I do. I'm yeah. sure I do. I'm, I'm sure I do. But the funny thing is, I like around the holidays, I make cocktails, and during the winter, I'll make cocktails. But like. More often than not, like if it's a Thursday night, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of ready for the weekend. Uh -huh. I'll just pour a glass of whiskey, yeah, and that's it. Like, or like, I, um, those old, the old fashioned mixers are actually pretty good that they're putting out there now. They are. So yeah. I, I keep a bottle of one of those around, and I'm like, okay, just a little, yep, little old fashioned, yeah, just a simple whatever. So when you go to a bar, mm -hmm. like if you order an old fashioned, and they're like, great, what do you, what bourbon? Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, whatever. And they're like, well, what, what would you like? And I'm like, I really, bartender's choice. Like, yeah. yeah. Or, or waiter's choice, whatever the case may be. And then they're, yeah. it's still, they're still kind of stuck by that. And they'll, and if they offer me a suggestion, I'm like, yep. Cause I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm sure. like, you could, you can put Evan Williams in there. You can put mm -hmm. whatever, bullet in there. It doesn't matter. How mm -hmm. do you, do you, do you ask for a specific? It depends. Um, so, Depends who's paying. Like, what? Well, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I will take advantage of my friends. Um, no, I, most of the time, like if my wife and I go out to a nice dinner and I'll say, you know, could I, could I get a Manhattan or could I get an old fashioned or whatever? Um, and they say, what, what bourbon? Um, I read an article probably two months ago that was like, we independently asked 15 bartenders Right. What's their go-to bourbon for an old-fashioned? Nine of the 15 said Buffalo Trace. 
Okay. They're like, that's the best one for an old fashioned because it does it opens up the flavor without dominating the cocktail. All right. Um, so then I would say Buffalo Trace. I used to just say Whitford Reserve. Yeah. So because I know about the price point. Right. And so for me, it's an economical thing where sure. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's I, in my yeah, like I I don't I don't want to pay twenty two dollars for a cocktail, but mm-hmm. I'll pay twelve dollars for a cocktail at a nice restaurant. Right. Um, now, but most of the time when we when we go out. Um, like if we go out to dinner, I only have one drink, right? And it's almost always a Hendrix Dirty Martini. Okay. And so, um, but it's just because I tell I order it because I might get vodka if I don't specify Hendrix. So I want gin, not vodka. So right. Hendrix Dirty Martini. Interesting. So, I um, you know, you go to a cocktail and you get you'll get less than this mm-hmm. in some restaurants around here. Is a cocktail and I'll mm-hmm. charge you twelve, sometimes fourteen bucks. Um, but then like get into, I don't know, some other places and you'll order, you'll order a cocktail. Like we went up to Kenosha and went out to dinner and I ordered a old fashioned and it was a full glass Yeah, and it was stiff and it yeah. was eight bucks. And I was like, yeah, uh, <laughs> y'all do it right up here. Uh, in the right uh, yeah. So it's, it's nice living, yeah. uh, the, well, the nice thing about living in a wealthy county is that when you vacation and travel, you're kind of like, well, I'm living kind of at the high end of what yeah. people expect, even though I don't live at a high end level uh, with within my lifestyle. Sure. When I travel out of the area, I'm like, oh, it's cheap. Like, I remember yeah. we did Universal a couple of years ago, and like before, I'd be like, you, you don't eat at amusement parks because they gouge you. Mm-hmm. But now living up in Hamilton County, when I, we went to Universal, and they're like, you want to eat here? And I'm like, well, I mean, what? Oh. Yeah, like, no, we can afford this. That's, that's the price of a burger at home, so sure, yeah, no problem. I um, I think I told you last uh, last spring, after we, it was probably on the podcast, so go back, I don't know, 30 episodes and you might get it. I won't. But Oh, no, actually. You won't either. That's not how math works. Oh. It'd be closer to like 22 episodes. <laughs> Anyways, um, my wife and I went on vacation last year, and we just went to like a resort down in southern Florida, and the... Nude? We went out, was it nude? No, no, fully clothed. Oh, fully nude. No, it was a hijab. Oh, so yeah. resort. Oh, and um, <laughs> so we went to dinner. Like typically, if we go on vacation, we'll go out to dinner one night where it's like kind of a nicer dinner. Mm-hmm. Most of the other dinners are just real casual. And so we had walked to dinner at this restaurant, and I'm trying to remember. It was like a Greek or Mediterranean restaurant or something like that. So I ordered an old fashioned, and like typically, you know, a scotch pours two fingers, right? And that's just kind of, that's your scotch pour. My old fashioned was two fingers. And I remember I looked at the waiter and it was 16 bucks. And I looked at the waiter and I was like, where's the rest of it? And he's like, I'm sorry, what's the problem, sir? And I'm like, that's, where's the rest of my old fashioned? He's like, that is the old fashioned, sir. And I'm like, if I wanted, if I, if I wanted like a normal sized old fashioned, he's like, we can make you a double. And I was like, and then I have to, pay $32 uh, for right, a real for, old fashioned. Uh-huh. He's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, no, I'll just take a glass of Chianti. Thanks. Please take this back. Yeah. I'm not paying $16 for two fingers of an old yeah. fashioned. Like, and, and like, and it was, I'm not, especially with service people, I'm typically not confrontational. I'm not, let's send this back. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, it's got to really be messed up right. for me to be like, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. This is not what, what are I we ordered. doing here? Uh huh. But I was, I was just like, okay, I'll take the nine dollar Chianti, and you can take whatever you call an old fashioned back to the bar and have the bartender eat it. We had a, we had a restaurant that overcharged us, charged us ten dollars more than what we had signed on the bill, mm-hmm. and I I'm a I'm at least a twenty percent tipper, sure, um, at least, um, and so like we got the bill in, and Cammy's like, hey. Like she, she still balances our checkbook yeah. in today's world, um, yeah. which is a little archaic, it's a little antiquated. It is, <laughs> um, but it it catches opportunities like this, where sure. she's like, "Hey, we signed this at whatever, and they charged us whatever," and she's like, "Do you care?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I care." And she's like, "Okay, well, I'll call them." I'm like, "No, no, no, I'll call them. I will call them." So I did. I called the restaurant. And I said, "Hey, here's." situation we were here a week ago here's what we signed i have the receipt here i'm looking at it yeah i have the bill here here's what you charged us not cool like i get it accidents happen let's fix this yeah and so they had to send me through a couple of other things and yeah i had to finally any one guy 
and they were they were apologetic, and I was nice and kind, whatever. But sure. I was like, we, you know, we, we, I'm sorry, we have that fixed. I'm like, yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, we fired Debbie. Don't do it. Like, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> we, we had so we had that a couple, a couple things on that. And I'm not going to name the restaurants because this is a bad review. Mm -hmm. But um, we had gone out when I turned 40 a few years back. We went to this specific restaurant, and it was an awful experience. Absolutely awful. Uh huh. And like I, I went to the manager after, and I was like, "Look, I, we could have gone anywhere for my 40th. We yeah, chose here, right? And like, the, you guys really dropped really the ball, missed the mark. Yeah. And and they're like, "We're so sorry. We're so sorry." And I was like, "You know, I don't. It's not for us. Like, we'll pay for the dinner, right? Like, because we ate the dinner. Like, I'm not trying to get out right. of the dinner. I'm just trying to say, like, we expected a lot more. Out yeah, of you guys are off your game. Yeah. And if this, fix it. And like, so then, about a year ago, my stepson wanted to go there for his birthday. So we went to the same restaurant, and it was even worse somehow. Mm. Where and it's like a steakhouse, like this. I mean, it's a steakhouse, right? And it's a nice steakhouse. Yes. And so, but it was like, I ordered the strip, and they brought me the ribeye. But like, somehow my food came out before everyone else's, and like my mm. in-laws were there, so there's five of us. But then my food comes out, and it's wrong. So I'm like, hey, I ordered the strip. I think yeah. this is the ribeye. Like, right. it looks like a ribeye. <laughs> so the server's like, oh, yeah, sorry. And so she takes it back. And then everybody else's food comes out. And then they all get done eating. And then my food yeah. comes out like a hockey puck. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I ordered it medium. Like, yeah. this is burnt. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, look, just don't worry about it. Everybody's waiting on me at this point. Yeah, I can eat. I'm not eating home. home. Like, yeah. let's just let's just go. We're not doing this. But then they charged me for all of it. Oh, and like, and then when the server came back, I was like, Hey, yeah, we're not we're not gonna pay for we're this. Doing this, like, you gave me the wrong steak twice, and like, we're not gonna. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. We'll take that off. And I'm like, It should have never been on there. Right. Yeah. And like, oh man. And so recently, my wife and I had a long weekend, and we decided like let's try this restaurant we've not tried before it was like a, a steak and seafood place uh -huh. and so we we go there and maybe it's just us maybe we're just cursed i don't know we we've had good experiences other places but we tried this new place and our server looked to be in her early 20s uh-huh fairly ill-equipped for the job uh -huh. and like we're not we're not a high maintenance table right. we typically get an appetizer yeah we get our meals we don't get dessert my wife might have a couple recommend like a couple like alterations to her meal, like no butter, no dairy kind of things. But like for the most part, we know what we're gonna do. Sure. Like we stay in our lane. But then like our server just disappeared. And it was the first time I can remember where I didn't tip 20%. Mm. Because you were saying like you're always I'm we're always 20% people right. too. Yeah. Like at least 20%. At least. Like if yep. it's if it's above and beyond, yeah. we'll we'll adjust accordingly. But it was the first time where I was like Nope, you genuinely earn 10%. Yeah. And, like, this feels like such a slap in the face, but, like, this is a reflection on your... And, and it was magnified by the table next to us had the greatest server right. on the planet. Like, yeah. the most attentive, yeah. like, respectful, yeah. knew when to interject, knew, and, like, that couple, sidebar, that couple had a full-on <laughs> fight at the table. No, oh. like, my wife and I were like, they're, oh. they're fighting, right? And she's like, oh, yeah, and I was like, that guy is masterful with the F word. Like I have <laughs> never, I have never sat in a nice-ish restaurant. George Carlin was sitting next to you, huh? And heard a guy punctuate. Wow! It was, like, it was like every time he used the F word, he like threw it at her. Uh, and I was like, wow, this is. I, I'm taking notes. I'm like, okay, so like. And like and it was funny because they were whisper fighting. Uh huh. Right. But yeah, they were you still do like, whisper fighting, and I was like. <laughs> This is uh -huh. incredible. Uh -huh. So, like, we got a really, like, <laughs> subpar dinner and a show. But, oh, it was so funny because, like, we were yeah. both just kind of sitting there. Awesome. And we got to a point where, like, center moment for us, we stopped talking <laughs> just like, to stay tuned into the fight. Hold on. And we're like, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, he moved in with her and her kids? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's toxic. <laughs> yeah. And she's blaming him? For the financial mismanagement of the household? Wow. How can they afford this place? Like, it was, we were we, so judgy. We went out to dinner a few weeks ago with some friends locally. And um, 
and I'm I'm laid back. Like, and I'm okay getting an inexperienced waiter, wait staff that's over their head. Like, I'm like, cool. Like, we'll, we'll help you cut your teeth in. Let's like, learn. Let's yep, learn. Together. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna we're gonna be generous. We're gonna be patient. Yeah. Like, we're cool. Um, and and so yeah, I, I and I'm sure you are the same way. Um, but so we ate at this restaurant, but behind us. There was a party of probably anywhere from 16 to 20 oh, that was having a family birthday party. Oh, and by the time we got our table and sat down, they were already done. Like, they'd already oh, had okay. their meal. Okay. It was apparent. They had a couple of big inflatable balloons that were there. And you could tell they had some open presents that were there. Yeah. And it was it was multi-generational. You had, you had at least one set of grandparents all the way down to the grandkids. Okay. Um, and there were there were different age grandkids from from grade school all the way up to high school. You can kind of tell, and and two sets of parents of these kids from what we were assuming. Okay. But then they just like dinner was over, and they were just letting the the younger kids just run around nope. the restaurant. Nope. And and loud and obnoxious and like I'm not I'm not one to typically I'm like. Whatever you're, you're going out. You're celebrating. You're doing your thing, or whatever. Yeah. It was so obnoxious. Like I was just like, "Are you for real?" Yeah. Like, and and part of me is like, if you're having, and it was a, it, it was one of the probably teenagers, kids birthday party kind of okay. a thing. Uh, from what I could kind of, as I'm kind of gathering everything. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, why, why go out and do that? Mm -hmm. And why, what, like. If I'm a party of 16, if I'm going to go out and be like, hey, do you have a private room or a private space yeah. where we're away from yeah. the public? Because we, we want to be loud. We want to let, we're bringing younger kids. They're going to be antsy. They're we're gonna not be, going to like, manage them. We don't want to, we don't want to disturb, like, just the mindfulness of that. And uh, these people have none of it. Like, mm -hmm. their kids are running, they're running around our table. Like, they're doing laps around it. I'm mm -hmm. like, get it together. Together, people like, and they're just, and the adults are just sitting. I'm like, even if you do want to go out for dinner, okay, we're done with dinner. Let's pay. Let's go back to someone's sure. house and hang out and do whatever. Yeah. Yep. yep. No, thank you. You're so, ruining everyone else's night. Appreciate oh, it. So I totally forgot this. <laughs> Whisper fight couple. That same dining experience. There was another couple who sat like three or four tables down from us that had young children. And their children were literally jumping up and down in the booth on the and I was and I looked at my wife and I was like, Hey, babe, look look at that. Like those are like feral children. Uh -huh. Like they've never been tamed. No. Nope. And she was like, So we're never coming back here, right? And yeah. Like, yeah no, no, we're never right. coming back here. And and it was one of those where like we had dressed up a little bit, like I and like we were like, Yeah, let's let's go have a dinner out. Right. Like let's right. go have a dining experience and we were like Oh, we could have made this at home. And so at one point, too, on the on the drive home, final note. On yeah, the yeah, drive yeah. Home, uh, she was like, "So I don't want to be critical of your order, <laughs> but but you you basically just got pot roast, right?" And I was like, "Yep, yep, darn right." Like, I ordered beef short ribs, <laughs> and I got pot roast, mm. and um, I expected beef short ribs, right? Not okay. pot roast, yeah. And so now I did later Google and beef short rib can be construed as pot roast yes, right. and that's okay. Uh -huh. And it was edible and I wasn't mad right. about, I, I lived till morning. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I ate enough to live till the next day, but I was, but it was just so funny because that was my thought when it came right like for her to like, not on exactly the way right. home and be Thank like, you? so you basically yes, just got you pot saw that as well. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. I got pot uh -huh. roast and mashed potatoes. Yeah. yeah. That's all I got. So, um, uh, oh, I lost. I'm mine. sorry. I that's my that's my fault. I oh, we we, we talked about yeah yeah yeah. No, so the, there is yeah bad experience. Um, we have the bistro that's here in town, and the, mm -hmm. and the chef there. Uh, we are we friend, we're friends. We know the couple that owns the restaurant, uh, and they are we, we love them. They're great. Um, he's been nominated for the James Beard Award, which mm -hmm. is a major, mm -hmm. major award. And he yeah. lost last year to some guy that makes fried chicken, yep. which I don't get. Uh, yeah, down, yeah. Because, <laughs> and I guess that was the only... I'm like, that fried chicken would have to have me make it a mess of myself. 
And, I and guess, I'm not in the way. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the way of eating. Yeah. Know? So yeah, yeah. like, no. It, I guess that was only the second time an Indiana person got the James Beard Award. Was the fried chicken? Yeah. Movie. And, and it was and it was a little work. disappointing to realize that that was the case because it was like what? Yeah. Because this is a phenomenal uh, yeah. restaurant and they make great food. We went there a couple a couple of weeks ago with some friends of ours and it was the opposite, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I've never seen a kid that I've never seen anybody younger than probably 20 mm -hmm. working there. Um, although I actually had a small stint there um, as a, as an employee, mm. but still like we went there, we met some friends there. We've talked about, we needed you, yeah. And, yeah. you and Darlene and need to meet Cammy and I there. Um, but it is, it's not just phenomenal food. It is phenomenal service. Like, okay. And it is, it, it's, it's, I think I, last episode I talked about, like, we go there maybe twice a year because that's what we can afford. Sure, like, sure. you're, you're going to drop a hundred on a couple. Like, yeah. Yeah. Which for us is significant. That's like, same. Yeah. That's a lot of money. That's, that's a lot of money. Right. And, and for we, dinner. Right. That's and a lot when of money we go, we dinner. try, we get a cocktail. Yeah. We get an appetizer. We get the main course. Um, but the food is phenomenal. But this and his his menu is constantly changing. Every mm -hmm. month it changes. Mm -hmm. And this month, last month, December, I guess we're still in December. Um, one more day. One more. Um, it was pork meatloaf with foie gras. Oh yeah, foie gras. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. And and I'm like, I'm gonna order meatloaf. Like you're gonna order foie gras. I'm gonna, gonna order, <laughs> but I'm gonna order meatloaf. <laughs> and, All right. And, and I know Samir, and I know how he cooks, yep. so I'm not mad. Yeah. And it it was it it did not disappoint. Oh, I bet it was. Phenomenal. It was so good. He did a pork tenderloin last summer uh -huh. that I was like, uh, am I really gonna order a pork tenderloin from here? And I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah. And yep. it was amazing. <laughs> and and it's not just like the food is an experience in and of itself. But you feel like you're sitting in their home. Yeah. Eat, like they do, they don't, you don't get a waiter. It is, it is team service. Okay. okay. So they, they share, there's somebody different coming to your table every time to check on everything yeah. and how is everything? What else do you need? What, yeah. do you, what do you like? What do you, you know, whatever. And it, it is. That's awesome. It's amazing. Every, every time I go, I'm like, mm, I love this place. This is worth it. I wish I was rich so I could eat here all the time. <laughs> I wish I could be down here four days a week. Mm, mm. Oh, <laughs> I want to spend man. all my money here. Yeah, right. Uh, feed me, please. Yeah. Asher worked there, and they would do. Uh, and I, I, I did not realize this until he worked there, and then watched uh, the series, The Chef. Oh yeah, um, the, bear, the bear. The bear. Sorry, the bear. sorry. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Yes, yeah. um, but the family dinners is a regular thing at restaurants where mm -hmm. you. Where somebody, whether it's the sous chef or the chef, may the staff all mm -hmm. eat together, mm -hmm. and it's usually something different. Uh, it's not necessarily what's on the menu. Mm -hmm. It's not the it's not you're not getting the leftovers, right? Right. Kind of a thing. And so right. Asher would be like, "Yeah, after we close, like, chef brings out like chicken tenders, or he brings out whatever." He's like, yeah. "It's always so amazing." Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's I'm like, mm, I want to get a part time job at the. <laughs> <Can> I, <laughs> I just I only want to be part of the family dinner. Well, I have a friend who's who is uh, single who she she does some bartending there, and she's like, "Oh, I love the family dinners," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, you would, yes, yeah." And then they they are so great, like they're so connected to the community and just instilling that. Yeah, they they do a they do a thank you every year where they shut the restaurant down. And they roast a pig, and they serve a free meal in the alley wow. for anybody who wants to come out. And they provide live music, and it's That's it, cool. Yeah, drinks, and yeah. like you pay for your drink, but the yeah. meal is free. And they're like, "Come enjoy the, the That's day." That's awesome. It's it's pretty impressive. So we, we need to get that scheduled, the four of us, because you guys need to try it. Let's do it. Yeah, we yeah. should. We should. Next time we do a nice dinner, I'm going to suggest that. Well, that's my New Year's resolution. Are you a resolutions person? I, I well, because I was going to kind of pivot to New Year's. We are, and we've tomorrow. we've talked about we talked about this last year, but um, I didn't listen. That's okay. No, it's recently. Uh, I mean, I I've forgotten. Um, so I years. I am a big years. Big year. I'm a big resolution guy. Big year. Big, I'm a I'm big, a, big year I'm a guy. Big guy. Resolutions. Um, resolutions. But I. So I do the one word. Have you ever heard of one word? So this was something that somebody else did. It's He's not like, one note, right? No. Okay. Guess it could be. One note's the like app. Okay. Like no, 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 no. So th this this came out a few years ago where one guy said like resolutions are too much. 
Mm-hmm. Like they're overwhelming. People don't accomplish them. Mm-hmm. He says, forget, forget resolutions. Do one word. Find, find a word that you're just going to focus on. And he, and he says his whole approach to this is spend some weeks kind of processing this and see if the word comes to you and then let that be your word for the year. Okay. Uh, and I, and we've done that as a church. Uh, we've done that within our, in my circle, um, mm-hmm. uh, as we've talked about that. And that, that's been helpful because it, it gives you focus, right? Okay. Like here's my word. And it's usually an area of growth of like, I want to pay attention to patience anger. or <laughs> yes. Anger. Could be. Yes. You, yes. Intensity. Yes. I'd like uh, to be more intense. I need I'd more, like to be more angry. I need more anger in my I'd life. Like to be more angry. <laughs> How do I accomplish this? Uh, I need you to help me to be angry. Um, <laughs> uh, so I use one word, but I've I've also done resolutions. But when I do resolutions, I do them kind of differently than I think most people. Most people approach them as a like, this is a new year, so I'm going to start these new new year new pattern. Year. Right, right, and then by the end of January, like the studies have shown, like. Yeah. Within four weeks, we've all, by February 1st, guess what? We're just back into the normal routine. Oh, dude, when I belong to a gym, I loved the third week of January <laughs> because the, the herd uh-huh. thinned. Yes. Like, there were a lot of quitters. Like, get out of here. But, like, those first two weeks of January, oh, those were awful. Oh, you, all these, look at all these fat people here at the gym. No, 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 it's not. I don't <laughs> care if you're fat or skinny. I care if there's a crowd. Like... So yeah. Fat Jim's on the treadmill again. I can't get my workout in. Ah, there's a show title right there. Just, fat <laughs> fat Jim's. <laughs> fat Jim's. I just brought a dozen donuts in and left them by the front door and then pointed them out to him. We he... might even title it Fat J I M S. Fat G Y M S. Fat Jim's. <laughs> um so so what I do is I create a I create a resolution list that's like got two dozen things on it. Mm-hmm. And the idea and what it for me is it's it's I start this at Thanksgiving. Okay. So the Christian calendar year starts the first week of Advent, which is the first, usually the, around the first week in December. Uh, it's always four Sundays before Christmas. So okay. If you're if you're following how that works, so I usually start then. It's like okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna use the church calendar year as my kind of reflection of like what the um, Julian calendar year there you go. There you go. <laughs> represents. There's and so lot. by the time I get to the new year of what most of us think is new year, I, I've had some chance to reflect, to practice some gratitude, yeah. to practice some awareness. And then from there, I usually start dictating like here, here are ways that I'd like to be different or I'd like to grow or I'd like to explore and these will be done throughout the year. And so there are some that I, I then go back once I kind of create my list of 20, you know, two dozen things. Then I go back and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do initially? Mm-hmm. And then what am I going to look at in May? And then mm-hmm. what am I going to look at in September? Yeah. Right. And so I, I use like the seasonal years of like, okay, the beginning of summer and the beginning of the school year as also new years for okay. kind of growth and rediscovery. Yeah. And so I create kind of this pattern of like, look, I have 24 things. But I'm not doing 24 things in January. Yeah. I'm going to do not. I'm going to do maybe two or three things, yeah. and I'm going to recognize that those are going to take the entire first quarter for me to kind of put in place with sure. a new habit. And so, like, you have three months to commit to this, and you're going to fail multiple, multiple times in those three months. But you're going to keep trying because you're going to get this habit in place by yeah. the end of March. So that's I, I approach it differently. I think in the way of New Year's resolutions, yeah. and, and I'm just like, okay, like. Let's understand this isn't January, and by January 10th, I'm going to be like, new Patrick. I did it! <laughs> but, I, but I've been approaching it in a way that's like, okay, like let's really create change or transformation mm-hmm. in patterns, life, thought process, whatever the case, relationships, mm-hmm. whatever whatever that is. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's fun stuff, like, oh, yeah. I want to read, like, here are books that I want to read in 2024. Okay. Uh, or here are... Like, my grandfather always said this one. He said, you should learn something new every day. Okay. And he, and he was like, even if that is you're, you're something new, maybe relearning. Like, you may need, like, your relearning may be remembering that that guy's name is Mike. And he's like, that counts. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he was always good at, like, being like, what would you learn today? Yeah. And I'd be like, nothing. Like, particularly as a teenager, right? Yeah. He'd ask those questions. I'd be like, nothing. And, he, and my grandfather... Papa was his name. Um, right. Yes, right. And so Papa had this. Uh, 
quite disturbing technique that when he talked to you and it was serious, his eyes rolled up in the back of his head and he tilted his head. But that oh. was his way of being like... Possessed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, when he got into that mode, you're like, oh, football is serious. Oh, like, this, oh. this has merit and weights to it. He yells a pop-up. Cool. <laughs> but it was always like, what have you learned new today? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, like, nothing. Like, mm-hmm. So he was like, what have you learned? And I'm like, I guess I learned the py- polynomial factor of pi is whatever. He's like, okay, thank you. You learned something new today. Like, recognize that. And, and so, like, did you ever turn it around and be like, "Hey, Beelzebub, what did you learn today?" <laughs> no, uh-uh, because it was Maybe. terrifying. Like yeah. when you see that, you're like, "Look, I just want to get out of this moment." Yeah, I you got to out alpha me. <laughs> I mean, you just got to do it. But it, it was it was a very like I'd gone back sure, in my adult sure. life of like, okay, like I don't do it all the time, but there are times where I'm like, okay, what did I learn today? Like, mm-hmm. I, don't don't get to a place of complacency. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm getting ready, I'm going to turn 45 this year, which is ridiculous, because in my head, I'm like, I'm 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll be, I'll be 45 in 2024. Um, and, and one of the things that I'm recognizing is that other people in my peer group, um, I always said this of the generation before me, of like, God, they're just grumpy. God, they're just... Mm. All they do is sit around and bitch and complain mm-hmm. about the world. As a man um, who's a year younger than uh, me, I'm pretty grumpy. <laughs> All they do is complain about everything. Yeah, like, in, yeah. in like well, back in my day, right? There's that. Yeah, right? sure, sure. There's all of that that's yeah. out there. It's jokes. We make cultural references to that yeah. or whatever. But, I, but as I listen to people and watch people, I'm like, gosh, like my peer group is like just complaining about stuff around them. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to be... Despite the fact that I carry anger with me all the time, like I don't want to be this complainer. I don't want to be this negative Nancy about everything. That when I see it, I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, I'm just okay. kind of be this curmudgeon. Okay, I've got a center moment attached to that. <laughs> um, I uh, I had had some work challenges recently, and just a lot of unnecessary undue stress. And um, I was supposed to meet my sister for dinner. And I canceled dinner. And I, I was I, I was at the office late and I was coming home and I called my wife and she's like, Are you on your way to dinner? I was like, No, I, I canceled dinner. I just wanted to let you know, like, I'm coming home and I didn't want you to be surprised when like I show up two hours earlier than I sure. was supposed to show up. And she was like, Oh, what's going on? And I was like, and I was very honest. I mean, I'm always honest with my wife, but I was like very direct when I was like, I, I just don't have it in me to listen to my sister complain tonight. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Oh yeah, I get that. Because what my sister does is funny. We meet at the same Mexican restaurant about halfway between our houses, which is great for her because it's country roads. Okay. So she gets there in half an hour. Sure. I have to fight rush hour traffic. So it takes me about an hour and 10 minutes to get to dinner. Uh And so I'm already frustrated when I get there. And then my sister will filibuster me with all the things that she's lousy complained about. Uh Uh-huh. And just, just wants to, somebody to listen. You're like, this isn't your center of St. So, moments. I'm not interested. I know. Get a podcast. Yes. Get a friend please, in your podcast. Please. Allison, get her on a podcast. <laughs> and so, but then what she'll do after that is it, it never fails. I have she, to listen to all of this. She's a Christian woman, right? She is. Next she time is. you see her, just be like, have you taken it to the Lord? Give her that. Nah, she knows me too well. <laughs> she'll, she'll call BS on that. Question. I know, but that's what would be great because she'll be like, what? Yeah. What did you no, like? She'll, she'll, she'll have to reprogram. Yeah. She'll be like buffering, buffering, yeah. need, buffering. Need, need a hard restart. Need. Yeah. So no. Um, have, you, have you taken that to the Lord? But then here's the worst part: is she goes on her litany of complaints right up until the food arrives. Uh huh. What's going on with you? <laughs> Shut. I'm like, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I did not sit here and listen to you for 35 minutes. Uh-huh. Until my whatever I ordered got here. <laughs> I'd like to eat my arroz con pollo, please. Uh-huh. I don't want to listen to... Uh-huh. No, we can eat in silence at this point. Uh-huh. We don't need to... And so, so it was just so funny because like, I, I was just so over capacity mentally uh-huh. that day where I was like... I, I, just, I, can't, works. I can't listen to more people complain yeah. at me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm out. I can't do that. I, I, had, a, I had a really good friend uh, in high school and 
um, she, she was a great friend, a really a very close friend. And then when we went to college, uh, she had a she had a boyfriend, uh, and she was kind of figuring out college life. We were both out there doing college life stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. But when we were home, we always tried to connect. We always tried to go out and grab dinner. And um, gosh, this was before cell phones. Like you couldn't send a text to be like, hey, we're running late, whatever. Yeah. Like so, I remember once, like I we'd emailed each other, and I was like. Yeah, here's when I'm coming home, and she's like, "Great, let's let's meet at the Steak and Shake in South County, which is not our hometown. It was another 40 minute drive." Um, and I was like, "Okay, we'll be, I'll be there. I'll be coming through. I'll be there about 3:30." Yeah. And like I remember, like I gotten there early, but I'm like, "I'm early, so I'll just wait in the parking lot until she shows up." And I remember waiting till like longer than I should have, but I would I probably waited till 4:30, where I was finally like. Called, left a message, gave her a voicemail, or I'm not even sure we had cell phone. machine. I'm not even sure we yeah. had cell phones at that yeah. point. Like I think I like was like, okay, I'm leaving. Like I was willing to give her St. Louis traffic accident, yeah, whatever. But an hour later, like I'm going home. Yeah. Like, and I went home, and she's like, oh hey yeah, I think whatever she gave me whatever excuse and th this was not the first time she had done this like yeah. she had done this a number of times so we finally set up a meal like we finally got together and had a meal and and uh and she was talking about something and i said well i said you you always take advantage of our relationship and she's like what and i'm like you always expect me to just wait like mm -hmm. and that's fine like i'm a friend i want to wait i like yeah. seeing you but you just so you if you're not aware yeah. like you take advantage you expect me to just kind of put my life on hold until you're available and ready to show up and that's cool but i'm not going to do that anymore so yeah. whatever whatever happens and i'm going to give you 15 minutes and after that i'm going to move on and and she's like i think you're being unfair and i, uh, and I was like that's fine but i sat there and waited like yeah. i've I know the time that I've spent. Yeah. And, and like we went on and she was mad at me and I was like, well, so be it. Like that relationship's probably over and that's unfortunate, but yeah. like I'm tired of waiting. I'm yeah. tired of spending all that time. And she, I remember her calling back and she's like, I realize I've done that with you because you've always been so gracious that I took advantage of that. And yeah. she's like, I own that. And I was like, eh, that's fine. I'm glad you see that. Yeah. It won't matter until it shows up in our relationship. Like, mm -hmm. if the next time you're late, I'll be like, well, it didn't matter. Yeah. Like, you saw it, but you didn't care to change. Yeah. It's it's funny because my sister knows that I don't have patience for people who can't manage time. Yeah. And and that's that's a blanket. That's everybody. Yeah. Like, and I, I mean, things happen where, like, you get caught in traffic. I get it. But, like, for the most part, I'm never more than five minutes late. And I'm not very consistently a late person i'm I, yeah right and, but I, i'll give 15 post yeah. covid i'm like 15 minutes yeah, i'll give you some time stuff happens and yeah. i'll i'll even give you i completely forgot about the meeting yeah, yeah absolutely okay i've done that sure that sucks sure you're like i don't know how this happened but i just completely miss this yeah i get it no I but let me know that like as soon as we live like in 15 the... minutes in i'm like hey are are you close mm -hmm. um I, Maybe you got caught in traffic. I don't want to rush you. Like, stuff happens. I get it. But just let me mm -hmm. know. And they're like, oh, my gosh. I completely forgot this. So I'm like, cool. Don't sweat it. Yeah. I gave you my 15-minute allotment. I'm moving on. Wow. So we're different there. I send a skull and crossbones emoji. Yeah. No, like, yeah. I give them the Jolly Roger to let them know they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that that is. But it's funny because my sister knows that because like there was one time we were supposed to meet at that restaurant and she I waited 20 minutes and I drove home. And she called me and like I was only like 10 minutes from the restaurant. Right. She called uh -huh. me. She's like, where are you? Right. And I was like, I left. Uh huh. I was like, I'm not. I don't wait for anyone. <laughs> like, and that's that's a me thing. Like, yeah, I own that. Right. But like, no, you're my time's not less valuable than your time. Yeah. And so like if you if you have a meeting with me like. Don't waste my time because I'm not going to waste your time. Right. Like that's that's the equity of this relationship. Is like I'm not going to waste your time. Please have that same respect. But there just seem to be so many people where they're like, I'm the main character and you can wait on me. And I'm like, well, you can get bent because I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I, I have this other thing that happens too. So that here's the other side of that where people 
like you know you know I'm involved with a number of community things mm-hmm. as as do most people who know me and they're like but what I don't accept is when people are like well I was gonna set up a meeting with you but you're so busy and I'm like no, I am busy, but I know how to manage my time. Yeah, so don't predict my time don't, for me. You don't worry about you managing your time. If you want to meet with me, I will make that happen. Mm-hmm. You have you have access to my calendar. Mm-hmm. My calendar is in my email. You can get on there and you mm-hmm. can reserve a time, and I guarantee you I will be there. But do not use my life as your excuse for why you chose oh, not sure. to meet with me. And I have, it's interesting, I have people do that more than I wish... You wish they wouldn't do it as yes. often as they do it. I, it's, yeah. it's, it is yeah. frustrating. Yeah. And I, I have gotten to a point where I would stop them. And I'll be like, I'm not I'm not too busy to meet with people. Yeah. So if you want to meet with me, you should set a time. And I guarantee you, I will be there. Yeah. I am not too busy for people. That is my job. That is what I do. Yeah. Like, and so it's, I'm like, whoa. Just because you're wanting to create an excuse and trying to blame me, like, easy, easy. Yeah. You don't I'm get not, a gaslight me on my life. I'm not taking your projections. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your, this gaslighting experience. Has been nice, but why don't you move on? <laughs> well, who have we offended today? Uh, idiots. Your sister. Probably. Alice. Sorry, Kim. Get it together. Sorry, Kim. We also get it together. We Come also on. Offended her friend Allison when I said they should start a podcast. Together. <laughs> Sorry, She's in trouble. Yeah. Um. We offended like bad tippers, or and even worse, we offended bad servers. Uh, um, bad servers who don't own it. Like mm-hmm. that's there's a difference there. Like I've had bad servers that are like, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Like I will take this off, and I'm like, you know what? Those don't. are called millennials. <laughs> the bad tippers that don't care are called Gen Z. Uh, careful, careful. I don't think so. Uh, I think so. I don't. I don't like labeling generations. Oh, I love. There's it. good fruit. Uh, unless it's, unless they're boomers, I'm glad to are them. Rotten to the core. <laughs> Happy New Year. What'd you learn? Rotten to the core. What'd you learn? Um, I learned that you're a consistent twenty percent tipper. I am always. Yep. 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 I like that. Even if even if yep. the service is bad, I'm like people are allowed to have a bad day. That yep. should not reflect in what they're what they need to take home. Yep. No, I unless like it is a tro- if they don't own the badness, then I'm like okay. What I don't like is I don't like pizza delivery services wanting to tip me for nothing or or other places. Yeah, like print, there's a printing oh. service, and I, I don't think it's their problem. I think it's just their point of sale automatically offers a tip. Mm-hmm. And I have a board member who she's like, well, I always give them a ten percent tip. I'm like, yeah, don't. They don't. They haven't. They did their job. Yeah. They did not give you. They did not deserve a tip. She's like, well, I'll pay for the tip. I'm, don't don't reimburse me for that. I'm like, stop paying the tip <laughs> for the service. <laughs> stop it. Like it. I poured me. you this coffee. <laughs> Please give me two dollars. For real. Yes. You I'm like the coffee. You poured me a coffee. A coffee. This shop. is your job. Yeah. You did your job. Guess what? I don't tip the custodian <laughs> in my office. And people are like, don't you feel bad about that? I'm like, nope, not at all. Yeah. If they do not show up to my, if they do not yeah. carry anything to my table, yeah. they get no tip. Yeah. Anyway, rants. So we offended people <laughs> who demand a tip, Gen Z. I will tip you well, but you got you to gotta do something gotta to deserve it. a tip. You got to earn it. Yeah. Um, well, I learned that you have real specific, you know, arguments against... <laughs> Tipping, you know, perfunctory duties. I do. I do. Um, you want to send us out of I'm here? Make, I'm going to make that a resolution. Uh, hey, may you resolve uh, <laughs> to not resolution. get it, to not change in a month. Uh, and may you recognize that your change needs to do, happen slowly over time as you look at the inner sources of where your pain and brokenness comes from. And may you give yourself the entire year to be transformed and changed in the resolute hope that you have for yourself. Have a happy 2024. We'll see you there with a password. Um, my, uh, We're going to do this again. Word associate. This is not a password, but bug. Okay. bug. Uh, mighty. <laughs> see you in the new year. Bug mighty. Bug mighty. Oh, that's a new movie coming out. That's a Marvel movie. We should have, we should create like a, um, we should create like a blind dock where we can't see what the other wrote. Cause like we can't simultaneously do it, but like that way I could like just send you a text and be like, Hey man, I've updated. 
and then you can put yours in, and then we can see what the words are, <laughs> and then we can tweet that out. And no, I, I think it's a call. I think it's you and I making a call. We got we got to make a phone? password. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, we can talk yeah, on we'll this. Figure this out. logistics. We can talk on our cellular devices. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you for jumping into uh, Center and Saint episode sixty three. Twenty three in the books. Twenty twenty three is done. So uh, may your day be merry. Shut and up, bright.